in a way, we are shifting gears here because um, a lot of what we talked about is related either to theology and history, moral economy, and my presentation is in political economy, which I think is often a missing dimension when people talk about Islamic banking and finance. Uh, a lot of Islamic banking and finance is being written from the point of view of either moral economy or jurisprudence, fiqh. Uh, whereas the political economy based analysis, um, while there is still, I think, lacking in many respects. So, um, so that's the, ba the basic background. When viewed from the perspective of political economy, Islamic finance looks just as another actor in global financial system. Yeah. There is nothing really to distinguish it that makes it different. It's just another product from the perspective of uh, political economy. Now, from the perspective of moral economy, that's a, that's a different discussion to be had. So my main argument here is that um, when analyzed from the perspective of international political economy, Islamic banking and finance ultimately work for and contribute to global capitalist economies. Its aims, which are providing a safe, Islamically approved banking and financial products to observant Muslims and mobilizing their financial resources, which are to be integrated into the existing capitalist banking system, are as capitalism friendly as they are Sharia compliant. So the basic outline of the presentation is I'm going to just look briefly at historical development of Islamic finance. I'm not going to go, it's a huge history, uh, absolutely no time. But it really is to look at data over time, which helps us in understanding trajectories, but also in explaining shifting emphasis across time. And then I'm also going to do a micro case study and really for, again, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna go into much detail, so you're gonna to have to trust me with my conclusions. Uh, Islamic Financial Services Board, ISB, uh, which is a standard setting organization located in Malaysia. I could have chosen, a num there are a number of these organizations. And actually if one is to maybe write a bigger study or a monograph, would probably do a comparative case study. But just for the sake of this to highlight the arguments that I'm making, I'm doing this micro case study. So the basic question that really led me to, to consider this is what are the conditions under which Islamic finance bodies show incremental changes in their operations, which simultaneously reaffirm the existing political authority of global capitalism by allowing new institutional reforms to take place? So to translate this is basically to look how Islamic finance has developed over time and incrementally changed in such a way that it did not only develop its own jurisprudential approach to Islamic finance, taking classical Islamic jurisprudence, fiqh, you know, all the, you know, Mubaraba, Musharaka, you know, and all of these different transactions that exist in fiqh, and then try to take all of that and make it work within the international regulatory financial system. And that gradual shift and change that occurred over time since the beginning of the Islamic finance, let's say in the 1960s, actually point to the greater and greater integration of Islamic financial models into international political system, which by and large is a global capitalist system. So one of the hypotheses that I have is that as central banks become more involved in Islamic finance and in every Muslim country that has introduced Islamic banking and finance, the central banks were called into providing regulatory oversight and capacity in order for Islamic finance to work within the banking system. So as central banks become more involved, the pressure is to comply with global standards and it increases, leading to greater integration of Islamic finance into global capitalist system. And there are many, many examples of that um, all over the world. Um, my analysis is based uh, within the methodology of historical institutionalism, and I'm not gonna talk too much about this, but basically 
historical institutionalism in social science looks at political developments in history, not simply accounting for status quo and change, but more specifically by explaining variation over time. Mm -hmm. And historical institutionalism looks at its institu it institutional change over time and utilizes thick description meaning it goes into really thick description of different case studies in order to derive um, some conclusions from it. So what is the current size of Islamic financial markets? Um, according to one source that I found, actually I found more than one and they're pretty much, they're very similar. So I'm using this one here, which is Refinity. This is based in London, Islamic Finance Development Report from 2022. It shows the growth of Islamic financial a landscape from 2015 when it was just over two trillion dollars to about almost uh, to what is it now in 2021 is almost four trillion and then uh, expected to, to go to six trillion dollars in 20, uh, 2026. So there's been a tremendous growth over time, tremendous interest, tremendous investment by Muslim majority governments, tremendous buy-in also by many Muslim individuals all over the world and putting their money into Islamic fin finance products, into system, but all, all, not only by Muslims. Um, it's interesting also to look at, for instance, major banks like Deutsche Bank and, and many others who have put billions and billions of dollars into Islamic finance products. And the question is, why are they doing that? I'm gonna come with some maybe speculation at the end of this presentation. Um, so, the moral economy of Islam, after all, we are talking about Islamic moral economy here in this, and theology in this uh, conference, is both an affirmation of Islam's axioms and principles, as well as a critique of dominant economic systems. In essence, Islamic banking or Islamic economics should be a critique of the existing financial system by pointing out its inequalities, inequities, on all of the you know, imbalances that exist in it. Actually, the basic thought that generated Islamic banking and finance rose within that milieu, right? It was the global Islamic, uh, global economic system is uh, wrong, whether it be socialist or capitalist, over time capitalism dominated, um, and uh, Islam provides sort of an alternative to that. That's the kind of 